Hello and welcome to Chatterco Podcast, where we walk you through scene by scene of a movie and give, give our opinion on the scene and the movie in general. I'm your host, Drinking Thomas Hughes, and I fucked that up very easily. I'm Hayden, and we're going to watch Dora the Explorer. No, we're not. What? But you said we are going to watch Dora the Explorer. No, today we're discussing the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Uh, easy mistake to make. It is an easy mistake to make. They're very close. It, it's pretty much the first major remake of a slasher horror franchise, apart from mm-hmm. Psycho a few years before, but no one talks about that because the film was shit. Uh, it was released back in 2003, and it mm-hmm. kicked off a whole wave of horror remakes over the course of 17 years. There is a fucking lot. And mm-hmm. there's still so much more to come, which gets me all excited. I'm not going to do a James and go, it gets me hard. Oh, shit, I did it. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, both, you both disgust me. Uh, the movie was directed by Marcus Nispel, who directed Pathfinder, the 2009 reboot of Friday the 13th, and the 2011 mm-hmm. reboot of Conan the Barbarian. Mm. The movie was made, as you know, ahead of the <laughs> watchful eyes of Platinum Dunes, which is a production company created by none other than Michael fucking Bay. <laughs> ah, so expect a lot of uh, over-sexualised women and... Yeah. <laughs> At least it's not much explosions. You know, yeah, not, that... not really. That's, 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 actually, that, that's big for him. Come on, it's Michael Bay. Say, that's really usually, big for him. Usually, he's like, he's, he's crack cocaine. He's pretty much explosions and Megan Fox. Not this has, isn't it? I was like, this has neither of them. So, yeah, he's doing good for once. His company would then go on to remake a whole load of other classic horrors. Mm-hmm. As well as creating some originals like uh, the Ouija franchise and the Purge franchise. Obviously, he did Transformers, t- Teenage Mutant Tales, but we're talking horror <laughs> here. No one gives a shit about them right now. Then again, do, but... the Teenage Mutant Tales do look very horrifying. And as you said to me earlier, from the same universe as... Yeah, Transformers. Yeah, but we'll, we'll discuss Transformers and Friday the 13th's connections in that podcast. I mean, we're definitely not... Yes. This, this, shit, we've spoiled it already. <laughs> John Fort Tom. <sighs> you didn't have told me. You know me. Yeah. Anyway, the movie stars Jessica Biel from The Illusionist 2012's mm-hmm. Total Recall reboot, The A-Team, Blade Trinity, uh-huh. Uh-huh. And, <laughs> and The Sinner. The movie also stars Jonathan Tucker from Westworld, great series, Hostage, Pulse, and Call of Duty World War II. That's for you, James. Uh, and James. <laughs> we also have Erica Learhurson, I don't know how you pronounce that, mm-hmm. who is in both The Blair Witch 2 and Wrong Turn 2. Uh, alongside her, we have Mike Vogel from Poseidon, which is another fucking remake. <laughs> Cloverfield, which you fucking hate. You fuck Cloverfield. Bates Motel. Hmm. Under the Dome. And most recently, Fantasy Island. End of a remake. Oh, that's... There's a lot of fucking doesn't... remake actors and actresses around in these hmm. movies. Hmm. Anyway, uh, <laughs> the last of the main five good guys is Eric Balfour from Haven mm-hmm. 24, Skyline. Dino Shark. Oh, I, had to, God. I had to throw that in. Um, of course. <laughs> Rise of the Gargoyles and Blackfoot Trail. <laughs> Going up against these five, we have Andrew, here's another one for me to try and pronounce, Brynjarski, <laughs> who played Zangief in the 90s Street Fighter movie. <laughs> 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 uh, we also have the late great R.L. Ernie from Full Metal Jacket, mm-hmm. Seven, Toy Story, and the Frighteners. Basically, anything that requires someone to play a sergeant or a drill sergeant with a very uh, angry sounding voice, he was the man mm. they called. Apart from Toy Story, he never really was shouting that. He was just, you know, Toy Soldier Man. Um, the movie focuses on a group of young adults who pick up a hitchhiker and end up mm-hmm. getting into the backward part of Texas's dark, dark secrets, aka mm. Leatherface. Technically, the a group, a group of kids who pick up a hitchhiker who then goes on to pick... They all go to pick on another hitchhiker, technically speaking. But we'll get into that later. Oh, yeah, good point. <laughs> well, at least the first one worked out for them because, you know, one of them gets yeah. to massively make out with the one. <laughs> but, you know, the second one, not so much. Mm-hmm. Not mm-hmm. so much. You get, an extra, you get an extra hole, but still. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you had to go there. Why did you see my comment on it like later on? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm 
I'm looking forward to slash dreading that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Anyway, so we get straight into this film then. Yep, let's go. So Talk. the movie opens with a voiceover narrated mm-hmm. by John Larroquette, who actually narrated the original movie's uh, voiceover at the start mm. as well. Yeah. He, did, he did both. They got him back. They yeah. had it, Obviously, he, his first ever role was the original one, was the narrator. Mm. And then they were like, okay, do you want to come back and narrate the remake? And he's like, okay. So they actually yeah, got... Money. <laughs> they actually got the originals voiceover to narrate again. Mm. He's, he's done loads of things since. He's been in loads mm. of like, movies and TV shows over the years. But anyway, so mm. uh, the intro takes us through basically a crime scene mm. and talks about it in a hole. So it's the Hewitt re- re- residence where five people mm-hmm. died. They obviously show different pieces of evidence, so like pieces of masks, body yeah. parts. And basically just go through the evidence and... We're watching this footage of these, this copper and obviously the cameraman going the through. Ca- the, the caterpillar moustache. Yeah. <laughs> going the through. The pedo stash. <laughs> going through the basis crime scene before we're told what the movie's called. The Texas Chainsaw mm-hmm. Massacre. And then we obviously cut into the actual film. Yeah, it's in 1973. Yeah, August 18th to be exact. It should be a technical thing, nerd. <laughs> so obviously we open with the group swimming having a bit of fun mm-hmm. really quickly before we jump in the van yeah. start blast this to sweet home Alabama <laughs> obviously <laughs> exactly uh, in this scene we're obviously introduced to the main character so we have Aaron mm-hmm. not Aaron as you get uh, called look, now I thought it was Aaron I thought I was always hearing okay no I'm dumb it's Aaron played <laughs> by Jessica Biel <laughs> we have obviously Morgan the, uh, the curly head one played by Jonathan Disco Tucker Stu. Disco Stew is your thing is that's the whole joke. It, the original guy actually did look like Disco Stew because they sort of replicate <laughs> the character. They do try and replicate the character slightly in this, like mm. the ones in the van to look similar. Apart from no, none mm. of them's in a wheelchair like the one in the original. But they try and replicate the looks slightly, and obviously it was a Disco Stew looking motherfucker in the first one. <laughs> <laughs> so they obviously go Disco Stew again. Eric um, mm. Bay Kem- is it Kemper? Kemper played by yeah. Eric Balfour. We obviously have uh, Pepper, the first hitchhiker they pick up. Yes. You know, the not snogging. S- suicidal <laughs> hitchhiker. She's played by Erica Lee Herson. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have, the, obviously, Who She's Smooching, Andy, played by Mike Vogel. Yes, who looks a lot like Owen Wilson, but, like, really, really, like, hobo-y. You, I thought you were going to say, just about the busted nose. <laughs> no, it's like really hobo-y. <laughs> so, uh, obviously, they explain they're heading to a music concert. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, Andy and Pe- uh, Pepper, as you say, in the back of us, you know, making out, going to town on each other, very extreme. It's exactly what you do when you meet someone there. Yep. Morgan's, gonna... Morgan's trying to put him off on the STDs and that. Mm-hmm. You know, weird facts, he's the weird fat guy. Fuck, it's me, isn't it? It's you, yeah. I'm the weird fat guy. Yes, you are. You're both the weird fat guy and the weird fat guy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I ever want to say fact. It sometimes I say it too quick and it sounds like I'm saying fat. <laughs> I swear to God, when we did the Pikachu podcast, I I tried to say to Alex, you're the uh, the Pokemon fact guy, and I, f- I swear it sounded like fat guy. <laughs> oh my God, this is why he's beating you up the entire time. He's beating me up the entire time because I called him the Pokemon fat guy. Oh, I just thought he was like pissed off at you for some like random reasons, like he like he snapped or something. No, it's because I said the word fat. But even though you're I said fat, him. I said it too quick. You're a humble person. That's why I need to slide down my words sometimes. But yeah, yeah. I'm the weird fat guy. Anyway, so, uh, you know, <laughs> they're smoking a bit of a joint as well at the same time. As usual. Passed it to Kemp, uh, Kemper in front. He had a little smoke. Mm. Uh, but eventually, they pass it to Aaron. He just tossed it out of the window and goes, oops. Oopsie. And then Morgan's like, oh, it doesn't matter. We have a, it's not like we've got two pounds of it back here. And she's like, what? He's like, I mean nothing. <laughs> we're, not, we're not in a drug cartel. Shush. Sure, sure. You know, they basically went to Mexico just to get two pounds worth of pot. <laughs> basically, yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. He goes to Mexico and does not get, like, black tar heroin. Exactly. So obviously they're having you know, this little argument which turns to a little playful fight before they have to swerve to miss a young woman who's, you know, mm-hmm. walking in the middle of the road. Also, I might add here, Hayden, the mm-hmm. young, young woman is played by Lauren uh, German, who plays Chloe in Lucifer. Really? That is that is her. My God, I didn't even realise. I never knew until years later, and I was like, wait, what? I but I thought I, I thought I threw that little fact in for you there. My God. I thought you'd uh, be mind-blown once again. I am, yeah. 
<laughs> and that will come up later on. Uh... <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. Anyway, the two women get out of the van and go and help her by, you know, mm. convincing her to get into a stranger's van. Yeah, she obviously, yeah. she's muttering to herself, you know, saying you need to get away. Yeah, and obviously they get her in the van and they start driving, but they all, like, sit opposite her, looking at her really mm. like, scared. They're just, yeah. like, really freaking themselves. I'm just like... Yeah, that's one way to like calm this like very like scared woman is just to sit opposite mm. her and just look at her really freakily. I like how like it adds mystery to like for the, for the first time viewers. Obviously, like anyone who knows the original will be sort of recognizing what's ha- what's happening. Oh no, no, not at all. Well, sort of, but not exactly. Like, like when they say she says I need to get away, they're probably thinking like I don't think I know who they're trying to get away from. Oh, oh, I was gonna say I thought, yeah. you, meant hit- I thought you meant hitchhiker wise because not, there is a hitchhiker that, yeah. in the original, but I'll explain later on. The mm. difference, sort of, between. But I mean, like, people yeah, I, I know, know what you mean. What's going to happen? Yeah, I know what you mean. So obviously, she's you know having this little freak out. Mm. They're sort of like trying to get this info out of her, like, who are you? What, what's, what's, you know, what are you mm. doing here and all that? And you know, she, she's not, you know, it's not, it's not going well. Yeah. I mean, would, she, you, would you like really talk much if you've been kidnapped by the Scooby Doo gang and shoved into their mystery machine full of weed? You'd be like, you wouldn't really be. I'd be that. saying, throw me that dank ass weed in the skin yeah. talk. <laughs> Come on, Shaggy, pass it over. Pass us those Scooby Snacks, let's go for it. <laughs> <laughs> I could actually make a uh, Scooby Snack looking uh, treats. There's what? A, uh, there's a uh, sort of recipe in um, the last Scooby Doo uh, cartoon film that's just come out, uh, Happy yeah. Halloween Scooby Doo. There's a recipe inside to make Scooby Doo looking treats. Does it come with the crack cocaine as well? Or? Yeah, just down the top must include crack cocaine inside them, or else it won't That's taste good, anything like That's the TV good, show. So mm. I, I just need, you know, I just need to pop to Mexico real quick. <laughs> I can go from Mexico then to Colombia because you know they got the good shit down there. Mm. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> she freaks out when she realizes they're going the wrong way. Yeah, and you know she t- says to him that they're all gonna die. Yeah. Before uh... and then pulling out a gun out of her hoo-ha. Yeah, she basically pulls a gun from her crotch. Yeah. After the yeah. after they stopped the van, obviously. Yeah. Get the brakes. Yeah. Yada yada. She goes, Guns out of crotch. You're all gonna die and goes all Kurt Cobain on herself. Yep, she blows the back of her head out. But I fucking mm. love this shot. Oh yeah. Because the camera being just pulled through the back of her oh, head. Yeah. The dolly shot is amazing. That is some great cinematography, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's it's a movie that's got some like it's you know, your average amount of cinematography, but it's got yeah. some scenes that looks incredible, like the dolly shot of it coming from mm-hmm. the back of the head, which took them ages. From I remember reading, it took them a while to mm-hmm. get the right sort of shot, and eventually we got that what we saw, which looks incredible to watch. Mm, definitely, obviously, quite reasonably so. They all fucking freak out. Yeah, they all go, "Oh my god!" <laughs> but you would freak out too. Well, if a woman's blue brains in front of me, I'm pretty certain I'd just. Pass the gun and go, fuck this shit. Do <laughs> <laughs> you know what, love? Same. <laughs> Everyone just starts blowing their brains out. That'd be a very short movie. It'll just end the life as soon as it starts. <laughs> yes. What was this about, what? 15, less than that minutes into it? The poor blue the brains out movie's over. Leatherface oh, turns up. Yeah, the you fuck? Look, look, they're all dead. Like, oh, well. Pops, the, pops in the van like, and drives away with the corpses. He's like, Oh well, my, that's my job done for me. Fucking just drive, just drives off. Bum, 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 walks bum, off bum. and walks in, in a hoof. We just fucking do it. Fuck sake. So yeah, obviously the group exit the van. You know, have a panic attack mm-hmm. and whatnot. And the, as you know, Pepper sits down. Uh, Erin sort of wanders off, looks at the field, mm. and obviously, you know, the men are having a conversation of, okay, what we're gonna do here. And Kemper's like, okay, that's uh, you know. Go tell the t- call the cops. We'll get this sorted. Mm. And Morgan's like, we can't do that because we got a van full of drugs here and a dead girl on it. And Kemper's like, okay, I can deal with that. Grabs his pinata that's full of weed and just tosses it into the fucking oh, yeah. air, the airfield. And they're like, whoa, 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 we can't just do that. And, <laughs> and we cut to Pepper doing. Yeah, I appreciate we've seen this on a movie before. Re- mm. Actually, one we've reviewed. Where she makes a joke saying, "I'm not getting back in that van." Straight back in that van she goes. <laughs> what, what film was that? I swear we did that. There's another oh. film I did that. What was it? Was it another horror film we've done? I don't think so. Or was it Other Guys, maybe? It might have been. I'm thinking it's either Step Brothers or Other Guys. I did the thing where they're like, oh, we're not going to do that. I'm not doing that at all. And then it cuts to him actually doing that. I think it mm. might have been. It was one of those two, actually. 
Probably. But yeah, she, she has a few of these sort of moments in this film. There's, <laughs> no, there's another one in a bit she does, which I do find humorous. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. so see, they get head to the like petrol yeah, station. Yeah, they, they jump in the van, head into the gas station. Because mm. you know it's America, it's a gas station over there, weirdos. Mm. Um, Even though I'm British, so I'll say petrol station. So obviously they go, go inside, talk to the owner, it's an elderly mm-hmm. woman, and they're like, okay, call the sheriff. And she's like, oh, okay, I'll, I'll call the sheriff. It costs you like, she's like 10 cents or something like she says. Mm. Well. And uh, why this is going why is going on? So they're looking at the uh, the weird display of rotting yeah. meat carcasses, and he's like, "Want the pig? flies on the meat?" It's oh. like, it's oh, very, it's you so can, hygienic. You could literally walk in there and go, "This clearly is a very uh, murderous town." I'm gonna go. <laughs> yeah, literally, like if you see someone who's selling rotting meat, you might think they're gonna be a little bit unhinged. Yeah, but obviously, while this is all going on, the girls are breaking into a little hut out back, where you know we learn about some of her. Uh, Erin's tricks she can do is like breaking and entering and stuff. Yes. And you know, she like, learns in juvie. Yeah. Pepper <laughs> then mutters another you know, humorous line, which comes true, and she's like, ah, oh. she says something like this stinks or something like that. And she I opens, so. she opens the door, and it's just like a really disgusting looking toilet. Mm. She has a lot. She has a few of these couple of. Oh no, it's bad. Oh no, it actually is. She basically becomes the, like the classic comic relief. Anyway. Even though she's not meant to be, it's meant to be obviously the disco stew looking yeah. motherfucker. He's meant but to be the more comic relief. Up, but she just ends up doing like the weird, contradictory kind of jokes. Yeah. Obviously, inside the port of the sheriff doesn't go his plan because the woman's mm-hmm. like, okay, he wants you to go and meet him at the old mill. Mill. And they're like, mm. what? Why can't you just come here? He doesn't say. And obviously, I yeah. had no idea. <laughs> obviously, they do get back in the van and head off there. Mm hmm. And obviously, when they get there, they start debating about just dumping the body since Morgan's like, okay, just the sheriff's coming, just dump her body in, let's go. And Erin's like, we're not just dumping her. So, obviously, there's two sides of the argument here. But mm. Kemper, obviously, Erin's boyfriend, actually sides with Morgan. It's like, she's dead, we can just dump her and go. But obviously, this is, they have this little spat before, obviously, they all sit down and stop pointing out the sheriff isn't here. Mm. But then, obviously, they spot a shadow in the background Ooh. and Erin runs off what to go check it out. What and is she, it? She finds a locker contain uh Well, when uh, Kemper goes to open it, it's a little bit of wildlife inside. Which oh, causes them more to laugh. <laughs> what was it what, what was the animal inside? Could, a possum. It, was it a possum? I thought it was a possum. Yeah, a jump scare possum. A jump scare possum, which doesn't really act as jump scares, acts as quite yeah. early for the group who just start laughing at it before an actual noise gets their attention behind them, where they find obviously Ooh. little Jedi die running around. Little strange boy with a very uh, buck teeth. Yeah, mm-hmm. son, Jedi. How dare you? Can y'all not hurt me? Please. <laughs> Obviously, they yeah you know, sit him outside, start talking to yeah. him, and he's 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 just sort of gazing around. He's not even like paying attention to him. They're like, okay, mm. where's the sheriff? Is he coming? He's like, he's like, nah, he's at home getting drunk. He's pissed out his fucking mind. And it's, it's they're like, okay, then just give us directions to him and go and find him. So he's like, okay, he lives in that house that way. Hmm. So Erin and Kemper head off, mm-hmm. splitting off from the group to you know, go through some dark and spooky woods. woods. One of many shots through this dark and spooky woods oh, this yeah. movie uses. There's a lot, of, a lot uh, of scenes. Dark spooky woods <laughs> scenes in this movie. It's like they're trying to fill in the time. That's true. But anyway, uh, obviously, there's some shoes in this woods. There's a lot of uh, shoe memorials back here. Mm. Definitely almost like to get the fuck out of there. It's almost like loads of like human shoes means there's loads of people who have left them but aren't here to collect them. Like they're dead. Nah, did nah. well, this movie's not horror film. It's a kids' film. What are you talking about? Yeah, it's Dora the Explorer. <laughs> watching right? No, we're still not watching Dora. I've been watching the entire wrong film this entire time. Then yes, you have. I don't know how you're getting the exact same scenes. I am. Jesus, did they just remake that movie from this? Yeah, didn't you know? Oh, I did not know that. Thanks for letting me know. That's my mind blown. They, they, they just replaced um, the Leatherface guy with um, Swiper. <laughs> no, it's the big fucking uh, Boba Fett guy. <laughs> the, yeah. You know Swip- what I'm about, don't you? Yeah. The... Swiper's the sheriff. Yeah, he's like, Swiper, Swiper doesn't like, actually like 
uh, torment them or anything like that. He just uh, steals the stuff and runs away. <laughs> so anyway, uh, you know, while they're heading off to this mm-hmm. place, uh, Andy has to drag Jed out the van since he's, you know, poking the dead body. Because, you know, you would do. Yes, exactly. He's a dead body. got to give it a good poke. He's More dead. You know, we then cut back to the other two who finally arrive mm-hmm. at the house where they meet the owner who isn't the sheriff but an old guy in a wheelchair. With no legs. Which I will add in the prequel, you do you find out why he's got no legs. Oh. They, do, they do actually explain a lot of this family's origins in the prequel. Makes sense. Which, it is a prequel. Which I, I, just, I do want to cover at some point, but we'll get back to that later mm. on. Um, so obviously they meet the owner. He's like, oh, you come inside, talk, call the sheriff for you. You can speak to him. She's like, oh, okay. She heads in. <laughs> he stops Kempo. He's like, oh, no, you have to wait outside. So only he's, like, he's allowed in. No. <laughs> no boys allowed, please. <laughs> <laughs> obviously, he dolls a sheriff for her. Well, at the same time, the sheriff actually arrives at the van. That's what? true. Convenient, isn't it? Obviously, this is Sheriff Ho- uh, Hoyt, who's, pl- yes, who's played by R. Lee Ermey. Mm-hmm. And he points out the obvious about, obviously, he looks like, I'm going to guess you got a dead body in there. <laughs> no no shit, no Sherlock. <laughs> but obviously, then we cut back to Erin, who just got off the phone mm-hmm. with the sheriff, and she's like, Oh, 30 minutes, okay, it's great. Kind of weird. Oh, well, <laughs> this is nothing, it's probably nothing. So, you know, she goes to leave, but the old guy calls for some assistance. So she heads mm-hmm. off into the bathroom to help him off the floor. Since... Well, he grabs his arse. He grabs yeah. his arse. Yes, he does. He gets a little quick honky honky. And then. Uh, Kemper eventually heads on him. He's like, okay, where is she? Starts, you know, nose around. But we obviously mm. cut, cut back to the van again. And the sheriff yep. having a little look at this body. Doesn't it, isn't it at this point he makes a joke about, did you guys mess with, did you guys, you know, have a bit of fun with the body? <laughs> yeah. Is it at this point he makes that joke? He does have that weird, like, moment with the body where he starts, like, touching it all sexually, but that's later on. Yeah, when he, you, like... Again, you'll find out a lot more about him as well in the prequel which I don't want to explain here because obviously we're not spoiling that movie we're spoiling mm. this movie but I'll explain some stuff to you later on if you want to hear it <laughs> oh, anyway um, he, obviously he takes the gun from the body puts it mm. in the, his little holster on his leg his little baby holster mm. and uh, we, you know once again put back to Aaron who you know is trying to help his pearl off the ground yeah while Kemper on the other hand runs into a pig Who's yeah, having a little run around? <laughs> do you know? Do you know why it's a pig like running around? Yeah, it's, 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 yeah, it's like chickens and everything. This fucking house. Mm. You know, you do your search. He finds a TV on. He Playing tries cartoon. To open, yeah, he tries to open the door, but he knocks some like charm, like bells off the door, doesn't he? Mm. You know, gets to pick it up. Do you know, he's, a, he's a gentleman, and then yeah. he gets cracked on the back of the head of a fucking oh ha- yeah yeah hammer. Some fucking leather face is uh, right behind him. Yeah, he's obviously portrayed by Andrew Briansky mm. in this scene. And the mm-hmm. entire movie and the prequel, he plays them in both, but he cracks him over the back head, which again is a callback to the original because the first death in the original is a hammer death to the back of the head. Mm. So they literally did remake the same scene, but you know, mm. with a different actor. So you know, he sprays blood on the TV, yeah, starts dragging him away while the cartoon's still playing away. I did like that when it's like on the cartoon, you hear the bang, 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 and then he gets yeah. smashed over the back. I did like that, it was quite funny. Mm. It's quite it's, it's a bit annoying though, how he, he technically he kills him off screen. Yeah. He's still kind of alive when he's dragging him down. I think he's pretty much dead from brain damage though at this point. Oh, and the last, and the last, last we see him obviously is later on. Yeah, we'll get to that yeah. later. On. But obviously, he drags him into his little basement door place and slams the door in the classic chainsaw way because that scene is done in pretty much every fucking movie. That is like the most iconic scene, apart from the butt mm. shot you keep seeing later on, and she, you know the mm. camera is like panning down and she's walking. Mm. That's basically one or two of the most iconic scenes from the original. That they they just remake in pretty much every fucking movie they ever do. Mm. Cause why not? If it's not broken, why you know fix it? Even <laughs> if it's used in some shit versions of the movie. Anyway, so um, you know we cut again back to the crime scene, and you know these goddamn cuts. What is this, Conskull Island or something? <laughs> <laughs> and obviously at the van, the sheriff has Andy help him wrap up the body with some cling film. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, I'll tell you, uh, wrap bodies, but then again, it is, but the, what did I say, the 70s, 80s, did I say earlier? Mm. So, you know, 
you know, not a kind of a all stuff to wrap bodies up back then so you know a bit of uh, clink film over the <laughs> body there you go and uh <laughs> we you know cut back to Aaron again mm-hmm. who you know he's still looking for Kemper but the old man's like oh he's not in the house go on get out of here and she does Fuck you know off. with a leather face looking through the blinds at her he's like nom, nom, yeah. nom, 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 he basically uh does he uh, a peeping Tom do you know why it's called that uh Tom is it because I peep a lot of people yeah because you've got to start watching me getting chained you fucking pervert Look, it's five times, okay? <laughs> five <laughs> times too many. <laughs> anyway, uh, um, I appreciate we cut back again to something. Yes. <laughs> cut back to the van again. I've got. I've used the word cut a lot. I'm going to have like a, a montage of me just saying cut, 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 cut. <laughs> God. <laughs> uh, it's literally Kong Skull Island all over again. It but literally is. Kong, but... K- Kong still, but Kong was good. Yeah, Kong, Kong is better than this, but it's still... Not a bad movie, but anyway. Um, so uh, I lost my train of thought. The cop car's left now, hasn't it? After they put the body in the, the trunk of the car, or boot, mm. as we're British. Yeah, it's gonna be all British. Car, car obviously drives away. Uh, mm-hmm. So, uh, hey Hayden, can you guess what comes next? Cut. Another cut to Aaron walking. This time through the forest because you know we yes. really need to see her walk through the forest again. It's to show that we know that she's leaving. The house and in the forest. Then you know we cut to Leatherface, who's up to something in his basement, yes. involving and, uh, some needles. It's definitely he's making a mask, which is totally not a face. It's totally not a real human face. It's a mask, obviously. But uh, yeah, so eventually Aaron returns and tells them the sheriff's. Oh, he's on route. But they're like, yeah, he, he uh, you know, just left with the body, so he's not on route. She's like, does they even question this? Oh, that makes sense. Okay. It, it's he's not a... like he told me 30 minutes. <laughs> Is Kemper here? No? Oh, 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 well. I thought it was with you. I thought it was with you. And then the horn honks. Because, you know, yeah. that horn was honking earlier. Mm-hmm. So uh, they head off to find it, what it is. They find a stick attached to the horn honking it. Because, uh, you know, as I said, that was definitely there earlier. But, you know, they're idiots. Who cares? So uh, they find some teeth. Or is uh Pepper likes mm-hmm. to say, he's at someone's fucking teeth. Yeah, there's loads of abandoned cars. And... Yeah, Morgan finds a uh, hole in the back of one of these cars and, you know, plays a little prank on them, puts his oh. hand in and pretends, <laughs> he's, you know, his hand's getting dragged in. He's like, ah, oh, oh, oh. But, you know, he just laughs at them, pulls out like, this jar, which has got, like, a water in yeah. it, and pictures. One's he's obviously got the bodily, hitchhiker. got uh, bodily fluids, as you will say, because that like, doesn't look like normal water. Then again... Look at the fucking bathtub of that guy earlier. That was not fucking water. Oh, yeah, that definitely wasn't. No. But yeah, there's uh, obviously a picture of the hitchhiker and mm-hmm. on the other side is a picture of family. Yeah. So, okay, it's a bit weird. So, mm. in good old Scooby Doo uh, fashion, they, they split, split up. up. The clues. Yeah, so Aaron and Andy head off to find yes. Kemper while... while Morgan goes with Pepper because dorky chicks like you turn me on too. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, read that in, I read that in the notes. You could uh, turn it the way around. You could say, uh, "Dorky dudes turn me on to." I was going to, but therefore because, uh, I didn't want to. Remo- I didn't want to like change rude. the quote. Yeah, but obviously Pepper's not really a dorky chick. No, but oh well. Uh, so obviously they all chick. they all split up, and uh, all while Leatherface, you know, pretty much you know doing stuff. He's uh, stealing stuff from uh, Kemper's pockets, including mm-hmm. a ring that I'm assuming he was going to propose to Erin with. Oh. I you wonder know, if that's going to happen. I don't think it is, Hayden. I'm pretty certain by this point he's officially <laughs> dead. Oh, oh hmm. uh, what, are you are you sure that? I mean, I mean. Oh, well, really they'll, 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 they'll probably confirm. You know, a body or something in a bit. So let's continue and see if they actually can find a body. Yeah, or so, maybe uh... <laughs> his face on the fa- on this on the love face. You never know. Yeah. We'll so anyway, they, uh, the two arrive and split up again. So mm-hmm. it, even like it's More two Scooby Doo's at once, they split up into two groups, and then split up into three groups. Oh my God! So you know, while Aaron's distracting the guy at front, yes, uh, Andy goes up. Uh, Andy, uh, yeah, Andy? Yeah, Andy, Andy, yeah, yeah, goes all uh, Ninja Turtle and sneaks in with you know a tire iron in his hand. Because <laughs> you know, you've got to defend mm-hmm. yourself here. Obviously, yeah. Uh, so you know, he's walking through the kitchen. She's a hanging me. The Being live watched chicken. by Leatherface. <laughs> nice little live chicken. Uh, 
notices a pair of hanging tights which totally aren't made from human skin. Totally yeah, not. totally not. So it's a very disgusting place. Mm. You know, eventually causes stuff to fall from the top of the fridge, which causes Aaron to charge in to find like, it. The fuck's going on? The old man then rolls in, no pun intended. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he yells at them, starts banging his walking stick. He's like, you, you're already dead. And they're like, like you don't kids get off my property. And, you know, <laughs> from behind them, a door opens mm. and a chainsaw wielding Leatherface finally comes running out. You know, there's a little fight with Andy with his tie, Ryan. Well, you know, Aaron's already fucked up and got out of there. So Andy eventually, you know, gets the better of him, mm. smacks him and bolts out as well. You know, runs <laughs> straight into a lot of white sheets. You know, it must be laundry day or something. Oh, definitely, yeah, because as Homer Simpson's chasing him with his uh, totally real chainsaw. Yeah, it is real because he gets his leg fucking cut off. Oh, yes, he does. Yeah, it's, oh, his shin, but you know. Well, close enough. It's part of his leg. You know, he then, he then picks him up and throws him on his shoulder and you know, <laughs> carries him off to the house. Yep. But, you know, Andy loses some of his nails on the wall, which you already saw earlier mm. or did in the um, news footage. There's loads of markings on the wall. Turns out they're Andy's That's nails. That's true. Because obviously back in the, uh, the Hewitt house, Lever Simpson's sticking uh, Andy on a meat hooker, insulting his wound. Well, first we get Aaron who makes it back to the van. Uh, we can. You know, he tries to start the van. Yeah, but we're really like, trying to find out what's going on. You know, this is all after mm-hmm. they clean. I didn't. I want to note they actually did clean the van here, so that's good of them too. Oh, so they cleaned fun. all the blood and everything, all the brains out. They cleaned mm. all that. That's good of them. But you know, the sheriff gets here course, now. Yeah. He tries to all, like, like all horror films, they won't start. Yep. Giant. So you know, he tries to uh, see what's going on, but you know, he finds mm-hmm. some weed and uh, tells him to get out of the van. Oh yeah, because like like he gets really, he gets really hopeful, thinking, "Oh, we finally got a savior." And and he's, he's like, like, "What the hell's this here? You guys been doing drugs. the drugs?" <laughs> Typical. And yeah, he oh, gets makes his him, gun out. <laughs> yeah, he gets him on the floor, hands in the face in the ground in the mud and all that, and you get the classic the Ernie, sh- uh, Ernie shouting at him. He's like, mm. "Get a bitch!" And you know, then Andy, he's you know, as you say, he's not doing much better. Get oh, yeah, put yeah, on the yeah. hook. Salted yeah. on his fucking wound. He's just hanging around with uh, Leatherface. Yeah. Not doing much. He's, 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 he's having his wound wrapped up. That's good of him. Yeah, that's so he, kind. He, he may have put salt on it first, but you know. Oh, oh yeah, the salt's to, uh, so he doesn't get infected. Oh, yeah, there is that. Very kind. Very kind of him. Totally it's... not preserving his leg to eat. Yeah, but, you know, back at the uh, the van, the sheriff, as you say, he's, le- he's laying there. What's going on here? He's trying to see what the fuck's happening. Aaron's crying mm. for help. He comes up with this weird theory that Kemper killed the woman. But when mm. Aaron argues against the theory, he uses some non-police academy tactics he say he shoots around them. Or he mm. drags Morgan back into the van so he can tell him what happened exactly. But, you know, back with Leatherface, he's now making a new mask. I wonder who that could be. So, you know, he Take removes his old watch. one. And with that nose, you can see why he wears it. Oh, yeah. Because well, in... It's almost as ugly as James. <laughs> In this uh, franchise, the reason he wears the mask is because he's got a skin condition. That's mm-hmm. why he's got a nose. Whereas the old one, he just was a freakazoid and wanted to wear a mask. So yeah, they yeah, added yeah. a bit. They added a bit more to <laughs> true, but they added a bit more to the reason behind him wearing masks. So mm. I do like that with this. But yeah, um, so, you know, in the van, even Morgan is uh, sitting there. He's questioning him. Mm. He's like. Is that where she actually was sitting? He's like, no, she was sitting here. Oh. So he makes, you know, him slide over into the uh, the brains. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's like, that's better. Basically, they start reenacting the suicide yeah. scene. A very, like, eerie, tense, and yeah, it gives him the quite gun, sexual. Uh, he's like, what did, he do, what did he do with the gun? And, you know, he puts it up to his chin. He's like, mm. see, I didn't see any wound for the chin. He's like, what did she actually do, boy? Mm. And, uh, you know, he puts the uh, gun in, in his mouth. mouth. He's like, uh, uh, uh. See, sucking it off. In the, uh, if you watch the behind <clears> the scenes <throat> in this movie, he actually did, obviously, put the gun in his mouth that many yeah. times. Because he wanted to do it right, the actor did, and eventually ended up just throwing up. Oh. I suppose some of them, obviously, that, he wanted to like, get the right sort <laughs> of, like, so the draw and everything and all right. But eventually, obviously, because he had a gun, his gun in his mouth, eventually he had to take it like, he was <laughs> bleh, everywhere. How do you fucking know all this, like, back to the, behind the scenes shit? Because I watch a lot of behind the scenes. 
I watch a lot of behind the scenes of, of movies. That's oh. why. Why do you think I know all these some of these facts? I'm the fat guy. Remember? It sounded like I said fat again. <laughs> yeah. I, just you, I just want you to make, make you say fat guy. <laughs> <laughs> My work here is done. Oh yeah, not bad. <laughs> just, just throw your coat over your back of your shoulder and walk out. <laughs> Uh, the call. <laughs> anyway, uh, so you know, uh, Aaron jumps up at this point. He's like, "What's going on there, Morgan?" And the uh, sheriff's like, "You sit back down." In the process, obviously, Morgan pulls the gun on the sheriff, mm. and he's like, "Get the fuck back!" And you know, Pepper jumps up, and they're, they're like, "Oh, don't do this!" And he's like, "The sheriff's like, okay, if you mm. do this, you're all accomplices here. You're all accessories to my murder." And uh. Eventually, fucking Pepper backs Morgan up. He's like, pull the fucking trigger to shit this motherfucker right now. Mm. But, you know, the sheriff isn't dumb. Click, click, click. Oh, no, it's not loaded. Yeah, but it's not know, loaded. But, but, you know, Morgan, this motherfucker is. <laughs> you know, oh, the sheriff yeah. pulls out his actual loaded fucking gun. And it's like, get out of the van. Get out of the goddamn van. Mm. You know, he takes the keys, of course, because, you know, horror mm. films. Kind of, the van's not going to start anyway. Obviously, yeah. You know, you got to add the extra reason for it not starting. Oh, yeah. You know, he cut them back to Andy as he's trying to use all his strength to pull himself off the hook. But he slips and just... Oopsie. Oopsies and falls back down onto it. Fuck me, I, I wouldn't even try it. I forgot. I was be like, fuck this shit. I know it's going to be even worse if I fucking fuck yeah. this up. I might as well just dangle here a bit longer. A bit dangling. Oh, there's a piano mm-hmm. below me. I'll play the piano. Ding, ding, ding. I'm playing <laughs> yeah. chopsticks with chopsticks. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you know. Playing Megalovania on that. <laughs> play, the tra- <laughs> play, play the Transformers frame. Let me know. Michael Bay's going to do Transformers after this. Oh, God. Wow. Anyway, uh, Morgan's now in the back of the police car. Mm-hmm. You know, cops, he's in the front drinking the sheriff is because that's yeah. you know, what sheriffs do. And he's like, oh, where are you kids off to anyway? We're off to a concert. And he tells them the band. I just can't remember the band off the top of my head. Mm. Is it? We're going to have an S, I think. I've you know, I, I don't know. I never heard of him before this film, so I won't try and figure out what he was. And you know, the sheriff's like, "Oh, we got something in common. I love that band." He's like, "Do you want the tickets then?" He's like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa! Was that blackmail? Are you bribing an officer of the law?" <laughs> he just turns around them with the bottle and smash him in the face. Starts bleeding from his mouth, oh. teeth falling out. He's like, "Well, looks like I got another thing in common." Pulls out his two front teeth. Got the same teeth. <laughs> This is America. I love that joke, though. He's like, he sort of built up why he said, mm. Oh, we've got something in common with the music. It's because he's got something else in common. He's got yeah. no fucking teeth as well. <laughs> uh, you know, he then radios someone. He's like, Oh, go deal with those girls. And that's them ready for you. And Morgan's in the back, like, shocked. He's like, What? Obviously, mm. he can't sit, speak properly because, you know, he's got nowhere. He's just been injured. So he's, you know, just muttering. He's I like, love, love you, Adrian. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> Obviously, the girls are uh, in the smart thing here, which is unusual for a horror film. No one's no, ever usually does anything smart. Mm. Which, yeah, they're actually trying to hotwire this car. Yeah. So it's again, Erin's you know, got this juvie thing behind her. Yeah. Just now, hotwire, hotwire, hotwire. Eventually, uh, we then cut back to the sheriff again, mm-hmm. who uh, makes it uh, back home. Yes. Dr- drags Morgan out of the car. Bit of peace brutality there. Yeah, it's obviously. Like outside the murder house. It starts, you know, kicking Morgan in the ground. Mm. It's like, you shouldn't have messed with that girl. You know, so, you know, this bad stuff happened. And we finally get something good as the girls manage to get this van started. And they mm-hmm. try and take off, but no good shit ever happens in horror Obviously movies. Not, no, <laughs> the tire just comes straight off and brings them to a screeching halt. And do you know what? To make matters worse, Hayden. Yeah. Left face Cut. starts chainsawing the, uh, c- the van. He, cu- he cuts the van. He goes, Durr! Uh, yeah, he starts chainsawing different parts. It ends up getting on the roof, mm. chainsawing through. Ends up cutting Pepper's coat, which caused obviously all the insides of the coat to mm. fly around this van a little bit. You know, uh, Erin then gets grabbed because she slightly moves. Mm-hmm. His hand comes down and tries to grab her, which causes Temper- uh, Pepper just to go. There's a lot of fucking similar names in this film. Uh, Pepper just to go, uh, you know, this, I'm out of here. And she runs off. She you uses know. the barrels like to like try and slow it down, but yeah, but, you know, Leatherface jumps down, doesn't work. No. He slashes her, slashes her, yep. and you no know, cuts her to the point where you know she's dead because her coat starts fluffing around. Oh yeah, and you know, with this snow, Leatherface looks up to reveal his new mask, which is actually made of Kemper's face. Oh no, he's dead. He would have funked it. 
It's that weird look on the face, though. He's the, the deaf gaze of that mask. He's like, hey. Hey, we, we can still be together if you want. He's like, hey, we should kiss. <laughs> it would have been even worse if he just pulled out the uh, the ring, popped it open, and was like, you want to still what? marry me? Will you marry me? <laughs> Obviously, Pepper, you know, freaks out. Uh, Pepper, fucking Aaron freaks out. Pepper's dead. Uh, Aaron mm. freaks out. Bolts for the, the back window. Fuck this shit. Runs off. Matt yeah. Simpson chases after her. Yeah, he starts chasing after her. But, you know, she mm. she escapes into the woods again. But, you know, they're the, never facing Chase. <laughs> like, even, like, for someone who's, like, never seen this film, even, like, I knew that these, like, chain, like, chase, like, chainsaw films he chases with the chainsaw. Like, this is like a scene that quite used a lot. What running through woods? Like, like the, the bit where like he like when the chasing he, like the victim with a chainsaw running around with it. Like that's sort of like I. That's all I really knew about Texas Chainsaw Massacre was there is this guy running around chasing after people with a chainsaw. That's all that's, I ever knew. That, that just pretty much covers the entire film. But to be fair, yeah. That's his go-to method, which is why he's probably like one of the weaker sort of slasher villains for the fact that it's just the same sort of methods. <laughs> which is probably why, I, which is probably why I like someone like Jason, who's a bit more inventive with his kills, mm. or uh, Freddy, who just kills him in their dreams, which is a bit different. Yeah, but I mean this or... is like, this is similar to someone like uh, I don't know, mm. Ghostface. They pretty much use the same sort of methods of killing. Yeah. Or Kevin from Home Alone, who just does traps. Yeah, or Kevin, or should we say Jigsaw? Yeah, same people. You know, he is Jigsaw, it's obvious. It's, it's a prequel, obviously. It's, exactly. It's when he's a kid, this is why he went crazy. His mum left him yeah. home alone. He got and angry then, and murdered them all. And there's a parallel universe where instead of that, he grew up to be a normal person and he gets really high and then he's like, high home alone. Obviously, but, you know, back to this film. <laughs> uh, back to the movie. <laughs> we haven't yeah. said that. We haven't said that today, but we'll get back to it now. <laughs> Uh, she managed to get away from her face, of course, and mm-hmm. managed to get to a caravan in the middle of the woods because that's obviously oh. a safe place to fucking go. Yeah, a, a stationary <laughs> small building. <laughs> it's not as if every person you've met in this movie so far has either been a psycho killer or a psycho killer's victims. Because, mm. you know, safest place for you to go is into a caravan where you meet two women and a child yeah. who a drug very... you. <laughs> yes, like, obviously, this, like, this thin woman and her mother, they're all sitting there, they let her in. Erin's trying to, like, say oh, what's happening. But they're, they're all like, nah, he's fine. He's a, he's a sweet boy. He's home as a sweet She's boy. Like, what? She gets really confused, because obviously, these two yeah. are in on it. It's obvious. Yeah, obviously, um... He knows the, not to mess the, the around thin, these parts. The thin woman, uh, Henrietta, yeah, doesn't, sure. she doesn't listen to the consent videos from the um, school we, we watched. And forces Owen to drink tea. Yep. And it's, you know, what's in, you know what's in the tea, Hayden? Mm. Some sweet drugs. Because, you know... Uh, like, does this tea taste like we hit all to you? <laughs> you know, Erin ends up uh, strolling into the mm-hmm. room and she hears the phone going off. She hears... She's like, mm. you said there was no phone in here. Oh. Uh, she like, like, she, hear, she hears a baby as well, though. Because there's a baby that um, the Henriette has, like, gone to tend to. But obviously, when she, she notices that there's baby pictures around with that baby in another family, which obviously let Erin realizes they kidnapped that's the not your baby. And you got that woman there going, Oh, my, my, my. <laughs> it's like her own only line is pretty much, Oh, my, my, my. <laughs> or just to fall asleep in that chair going, Oh. Speaking of falling asleep, uh, Erin does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she, you know, collapses, and then she wakes up to the sheriff, you know, sheriff. pouring fucking booze all over her face. Well, I hope it's beer. Yeah, hopefully. You well, got the old woman. Family. You got the old woman there, is like, yeah. you leave her alone, give her some space, because, you know, the old woman's also been on this. Yes, we basically know, see that every single person they've met, except yeah, for guy. the hitchhiker, is a member of his family. Which is funny, because the in the original, the hitchhiker's a member of the family. Hmm. The hitchhiker's the bad guy. Which is funny. Ooh. I'll explain some more later when we get into Ooh. it. I'll mention a lot of my overalls. I'll get to it then. But, uh... Obviously, just outside this mm. room, we've got a uh, little faces there, so they'll have a little panic attack on the floor. Yeah. Obviously, you've got little Jed outside banging and going, Grandma, Grandma, let me in! 
Uh, so yeah, you got the guy in the wheelchair, as you say, is also in there. Mm-hmm. Obviously, we knew he was in on this for the fact that he Obviously, had a little face in his fucking basement. I mean... Obviously, uh, Aaron then says, like, what's wrong with this fucking family? And they're like, oh... Let, well, it's just, you find there uh, now, Leatherface's true name is Thomas Brown Hewitt. As the is old woman, obviously, <laughs> I knew you were going to make that reference. As uh, the old woman obviously <laughs> shouts, Thomas Brown Hewitt, you get in here! And obviously he comes walking in, well, <laughs> bar- grabs Aaron, tosses her down into the uh, slightly flooded place, basement, so you know, we can have Jeff no in a wet t-shirt. Obviously, yeah. Just, <laughs> that's literally Because if you've got a female lead, you're going to have her be wet. And you can like... see tits through the... Uh, Shirt because I wonder yeah. who who made this film, Tom. Uh, I don't know. It, it's definitely not Michael Bay who, for some no. reason, walked out of the uh, Fight the Thirteenth movie because of nudity. too. But you know, we'll, but we'll it's completely fine with doing this. Well, we'll get back. We'll get past this. <laughs> so anyway, uh, Fox all fucking done <laughs> until she calls him in that scene got fired. But uh, oh, anyway, yeah. um, she, yeah, she, she she finds Andy strung up playing he's the piano. Jesus. Yeah, he's playing the piano though. We have gotta say that. He's oh playing, yeah, he's playing like Beethoven's like. One of his classic uh, songs. Yeah. I don't know much about the music, but you know. Yeah, he's going to do a bit of Crazy Frog. Yeah, obviously, he just starts playing Crazy Frog randomly. As usual. And uh, <laughs> she, she, she tries to help him off, but there's no way oh. he's getting off. And he's just like, I'm, I'm, I'm done. Grab but that knife me. and kill me. And with that command, she takes a blade and stabs in him the in the gut. Stupid way ever. Yeah, a lot of people compl- a lot of people complain about that. It's like, like the slowest hmm, fucking death ever. I'm gonna there. put you out of my misery. I will kill you slowly. Cause I love you, friend. Stabbing oh, so it is that through the then, chest. <laughs> you can, as he's screaming his arms his arms come swinging down because obviously it's showing he's dead now. Painful. And you know that's our fourth kill for this movie. Mm-hmm. You know, while bathing in his blood, begging for forgiveness. You know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Judas way. <laughs> oh, forgive me. Um, Aaron obviously eventually stumbles off and uh, finds Morgan looking dead yeah, in a chilling, bathtub. He's chilling in a bathtub. Fight you know, because he's not he, gay. He is, but he ain't dead. You know, he jumps up and scares her. He's alive. She helps him out. With the magical appearing uh, child, Jeb, who says he'll lead them to safety. Well, you got love face, you know, and watching him. And then he, obviously when Jeb comes out, he's like, come God, that's why Leatherface gets really angry. He starts charging down. So they, they start following him, and then they better hurry because Leatherface just rode up his fucking chainsaw and is coming running down the stairs after him. After well, not just him. <laughs> <head them. laughs> you know, he starts chasing them for the secret exit yeah. until the the free run to like a stairway, and Jed's like, "Get up those stairs now! Get up those stairs!" So, you know, as they're about to get the stairs, Leatherface has to stop because he's mm. uh, his chainsaw's running out of juice. He's to quickly uh, rev it up. <laughs> giving them enough time to, you know, bolt at the uh, mm-hmm. the stairs. But as you, you know, as he's trying to get up the stairs, Jed just starts biting his hands. He's like, nom, nom, nom. Which, you know, Jed's the only non-bad guy we've seen so far. We've also, uh, he's the only one with teeth, probably, as well. They've all got, like, fucking, some kind of rotten Dangerous. teeth. He's got buck teeth, but there's yeah. still teeth. But, you know, uh, when they get to the top, they slam the door down and let face just mm-hmm. soars through the, uh, the, thing, the uh, bit of wood they put down. Because, you know, wood versus chainsaw, chainsaw wins. Hmm. It's true. And Sorry. He, he chases after him into this like really old looking house. And they obviously push a sofa in front of the door and try and uh, mm. separate them from their face, but he just comes straight through the wood again. Obviously. Straight through the sofa. So you know, I have to run off and like okay, when it, everything's locked in this fucking house. So, you know, are we gonna do this? Uh okay, we'll just hide, so it's puts, hide. M- puts Morgan in their wardrobe, which sadly doesn't mm-hmm. go to Narnia. So that would be a much safer place to go. Well, Aaron hides in a little hidey hole. And then, of course, uh, Leatherface comes, comes in. in. He does a here's Johnny and rips through the wall. Well, he <laughs> comes in first. He hears fucking uh, Morgan because he's fucking shutting the door, the idiot. You can hear the latch on the door, so he goes for him. Uh, Aaron then mm. obviously causes the fucking rats to uh, make a sandwich and knocks them off her. Yeah. Which, obviously, as you say, then causes Leatherface to leave and just smash through the fucking wall behind her and mm. grab her. They're about to kill her, but obviously Morgan like comes in. You be the hero, no, 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 no. <laughs> and uh, uh, fights. Um, I, I do like this scene because you see obviously Lev face is, like, sort of tormenting him. He throws her on the floor, doesn't he? Just watches his face. Yeah, as he, he knows he's not going to do anything. He's like, you can't do anything. Obviously, gets his chainsaw revved, starts trying to kill him. Obviously, say Morgan then just rubby tackles him, and she you know, tries mm. to fight him, fight him, fight him. But you know, Lev face is a big muscly dude. He just picks him off the floor. 
uses the fucking ropes around his arms yeah. to hang him by the fucking the uh, chandelier. chandelier and just, you know through his, through his waist which yeah. he does he does a me and cuts between his legs yeah <laughs> which I believe in the uncut version which I'll mention again later I swear it's more graphic in that version because hmm. the version I watched obviously wasn't the uncut version it was the the version you find on DVD in that and apparently you know, there's an actual like proper like gory version of that which got too cut because it was too like, brutal apparently hmm but I'll find out when I actually get the uncut version Monday. <laughs> but, well, anyway, uh, so uh, Aaron takes his opportunity to run off. So, you know, Leatherface gives up on his cut and uh, chases mm. after her. She heads she... like a, a meat factory. Well, she's, she's really nice. Some, she goes through some barbed wire first, oh, yeah, first. which causes That's Leatherface it. to fall over <laughs> and fucking chase her himself, <laughs> which causes him to scream. But, he, you know, he pulls that sort of face that makes the same thing I make when I stub my toe. He's like, <laughs> fuck <off. laughs> He's literally the exact same sound of face I always make, <laughs> which you'll see eventually. Me to stub my toe, and you'll look at me and go, "He's going to do, it, he's going to do." It. And I'll be like, bruh, bruh, bruh. "But yeah." So obviously, she makes it to his meat factory. Mm. Really nice for the film with a slaughterhouse. To actually, have a real slaughterhouse. Yeah. So obviously, she makes it inside. Simpson uh, Actually, tell a lie. She. Uh, Makes it to the road first. Mm-hmm. And she flags that guy down, but he just sees a weirdo screaming at him, so she, he just drives off. And then she makes it to the old meat factory. But yeah. as you say, Leatherface follows her inside mm-hmm. and uh, starts chasing her around, but she manages to get inside the freezer and hide inside the With the cleaver? No. She hasn't got the cleaver yet. She goes out in a minute. Oh, yeah. So she hides in this uh, meat, in, like, literally Locket, between yeah. the fucking meat. And he's like, okay, head will do this. I know. I'll do a smart thing and start pulling these chains because, you know, of course, I just start screaming because there's meat hitting her, which gives it left face the opportunity to come charging after because he knows where the fuck she is. <laughs> and uh, this is when obviously she runs out and gets the meat cleaver and mm. hides in the locker room. Locker, yeah. And left face obviously starts coming through and he has that sort of that camera zooming on his face, that menacing mm. look. That was really like menacing. I was like, oh, that's a nice bit of camera work. And uh, obviously, so surprise attacks him. Well, right, he starts pass. searching for the uh, lockers, mm-hmm. but he goes too far. So she knows he's too far. So she starts shouting, banging to get his attention. Then he turns around. Actually, that's when he does the uh, zoomy on the face. He turns around there. Yeah. Then he comes back. So I strategically open the lockers, looking for her. And then here's a sound as he's going to open one locker. So he turns around, opens the locker just to find another pig inside. Then she jumps yeah. out and just fucking cleavers the shit out of his arm with him going, oh! She cuts. But she cuts off his wanker hand. Yeah, she cuts off his arm and his chainsaw hits the ground. She runs off and it's a funny moment because he tries to put the chainsaw up but it's still like revving around in the circle. Yeah, and he's he can't like, trying really, to get... like, use it anymore because of his... Well, he, he picks it up he, and he starts it, but, yeah. flailing it in the air. It's like... Argh! It's not as good as it was before. And, you know, we then get Jessica Bill run out into the rain again. Yeah. Gotta get that wet, get a wet t-shirt in there. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> she, uh... Managed to... Uh, Pretty much Stop. run off hmm. into uh, the road and she flags down a, a trucker. With the power of boobs. Act, she, you know, she acts like she has no life. This, this scene hmm. seems kind of familiar to me. I don't know. But no. uh, he gets you know her into the truck, tries to get inf- info from her. And Wait, for once, this guy isn't a serial killing this, cannibal. This is really looking familiar. Why is it looking so familiar? Anyway, uh, she, you know, she starts to panic. Yeah. When she sees hmm. the sign and she knows they're going the wrong way, she like, yeah. calls the dr- trucker to stop. It's... But luckily, she has no gun. <laughs> it's, oh, yeah. Almost like the entire this film has just gone full circle. It pretty much has. Is becoming the crazy hitchhiker. But she's not as crazy because obviously he sees the sheriff's car, gets mm. set to head off to get their attention. Obviously, she runs off and uh, she starts watching for the uh, window. Yeah. He gets the attention from the bad guys. Like, I got this woman here. Come on. And they're all coming out. They're like, okay, get my coat, Henrietta. Get the coat. She, she, uh, Aaron uses this like, opportunity to Just go to in. Kidnap, the, kidnap the baby again. Yeah, grab the baby. She's and that was saving a, the baby. Henrietta runs in and it's like, it's gone. It's gone. And, uh, baby, well, the sheriff obviously slowly approaches the truck, mm-hmm. which you believe Aaron's in, and she's hot wiring this yeah, engine. Because she's hot wiring the vehicle. I do love this sequence. It's really well it's, done. It's a be- as soon as it opens it, you see she's yeah. in there. He opens it. It's like, what the fuck? Shot away his fucking car. Yeah, shot away. Runs, the... runs him over. <laughs> not more, not just once though. She fucking runs him over multiple times. times. Yeah, three times. Like you gotta make sure he's not. He's like, yeah, not giving zombie. us our sixth and final kill, or is it? 
Ooh, he's yeah, two more kills. <laughs> she then <laughs> drives away. You know, the obviously stolen baby back at her side. Mm. She's you know, comforting the kids. Like, ah, but then Leatherface worry. appears. He tried to try to cut the thing, but he yeah, tries to change the car. Mi- misses and obviously just stares yeah. at the car with that evil look on his face again. And recreates the scene from the original one. No, the original one. He, he starts wailing the chainsaw around with both you hands. You mean like in that? But he still uses his one hand. I know that at least. But obviously, he doesn't like, scream as much as the in the original. And on top of that, we don't have the woman in the back of a truck just sc- mm-hmm. just like, laughing like, creepily because in the original one, she's in the back of just laughing at the fact she's won. Whereas this one, mm. we just get Erin just looking at the baby. It's like, we out of here, baby. I got a baby now. <laughs> you know, we then return to the footage from the start of the movie and continue yeah. from where we left off as the two cops enter the furnace. Well, I believe one. Fine. I believe one might be a cop. They said investigative reporters. But yeah. obviously one's a cop, so it's either a cop or just a normal camera. But either way, they both head in. And, you know, they kill Boy Leatherface, clearly, as he just jumps out. Obviously, yeah. As we get mm-hmm. the still of his face. And, you know, the uh, narrator officially dubs him, obviously, it's Thomas Hewitt, to like, uh, just, uh, everyone else that's not people watching the movies. And, like, yeah. It's the normal people. And then he obviously officially says, Leatherface. So we actually get <laughs> his name here, oh. which is nice. And obviously, he states the case is still actually open to this day. Mm. But, you know, that isn't actually going to matter as they, you know, did a direct sequel to... Well, they did a prequel, which continues this timeline beforehand, so, you know, it doesn't count. Mm. They then did a direct sequel to the original, which doesn't count. They then did a prequel to the original, which doesn't count as this timeline. And then they're doing another direct sequel to the original, which they're making now. But, you know, either way... Convoluted. Yeah, yeah, either way, you know... They've got away now. That's it. The, the movie's over. You know, we've got a survivor. So, uh, time mm-hmm. for some uh, overalls here. Yeah, it's just time. It's, what yeah, it's, I got, it's, it's, it's okay. So, uh, for me, this is probably one of the better horror remakes you'll find out there. So, a lot mm-hmm. of them are, are quite shit. Some of them are actually interesting and a lot a, a nice different take on the original, which is pretty much why I've chose the ones I've chose this year because they're mm-hmm. nice new takes on the original. Even if they do take some ideas from the original, like this, it took, it just took a bit from the original, but not fully. Um, so I, I think the characters are actually good in this film. So a lot of times when you're watching mm-hmm. horror films, a lot of the characters are really shit. And you're like, mm, I don't really like these characters. Mm-hmm. But I mean, they've got their own perks that you know make you love and hate them. Mm. Um, I also think the villains are really good. They aren't as crazy as the original movie mm. or other like all mo- the other like movies in this franchise. It's usually they're really like nut jobs. Oh, crazy! Blah, 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 blah. But you know these are actually no- quite normal people at times, which mm. I think makes them more scarier. As they can they- switch. Yeah, as they literally look, just look like normal people, <clears> but they're not. They're actually just in the back of their minds. They're just psychopath murderers who hide mm. hi- this big motherfucker in here. Just like yeah. Wednesday said. <laughs> she, she, she dressed up as a serial killer she looked like all normal people pretty much uh, yeah. I, I think Leatherface in this version is probably the scariest we've ever seen him and probably mm. might ever see him because they always make him like, try and make him too comical like they have like the first one at the end he had like a clown looking mask mm. uh, the second one he's just like I don't know how to explain it. he's just not as serious in the second one uh, the third one, he just got a bit more serious, but it's not a great movie. And then the fourth one, he, he dresses as a woman. He's in drag. Oh. Because, yeah, that is literally the, the fourth one with Matthew McConaughey. He's in drag in that entire movie. Mm. Um, and then I will give perks to the remake, or the sequel one they did after this. Mm-hmm. They do, he's, he is quite good in that as well. He's not goofy, so it's any sort of praise I can ever give that fucking movie, that 3D bag of shit. Um, the story is decent. You know, the story of young adults get stalked and taken out by one by one by a mass killer. You know, mm. you run the mill horror movie, but it works here. Sometimes it doesn't work because you know, they say sometimes if the characters are shit, they it really mm. doesn't help at all. You just you just rooting for the killer half the time, but this time, you know, you're not actually. Well, you, yeah, you're still rooting for the killer, but you want you want that high body count, but we don't get it, which is again weird for a horror film, but um. I think it's a, a decent story that does work. Um, the cinematography mm. at times, as we said, with the gun, the dolly camera for the mm. back of the head, the, the zooming on the faces, they it does 
do well at times. Obviously, at sometimes it doesn't do well, but mm. you know, it's those those few moments make up for it. Especially that dolly kill, man. That fucking looked really yeah. good. Really, really fucking good. Um, the soundtrack I thought was very tense and spooky as well, which obviously helps sell the scares, which mm. you really do need. If you don't have that spooky soundtrack, then it does not sell the fucking horror part of it. Like Crawl, that it had quite a spooky, intense soundtrack, which mm. did sell that movie as being scary. Yeah, and like, with Crawl, obviously they knew exactly when to hit the music, not play music as well. Yeah, which you do need to know at the back of your mind. Mm-hmm. Um, what else we got? What else we got? Uh, the the I said the version I saw, which is the non-uncut version, so the the cut version, the gore isn't mm-hmm. as over the top. Mm. You know, for a movie that's called Texas Chainsaw Massacre, it's not really a massacre. Yeah, a lot but, of the deaths are off screen. But as I say, apparently the uncut version, I said the Morgan's death's a bit more on screen, but mm. I'll, I'll, I'll see what I think when I actually watch that, and I might mention it in a later podcast. I might just bring that scene up randomly and go, I actually saw that. But um, the only last note I can give is... I do like that they've changed it from the original. So they do keep a lot going from the original, mm. which obviously a lot of these films, you need to sort of, if you don't go for like a fully original movie, you do need to sort of keep a lot going because a lot of remakes straight up just remake the original, don't even change anything. They just give you the exact same, but more modern, which mm. you're just like, why would you watch that? Just watch the fucking original. But then a lot of remakes like this, they do do a lot of original stuff like story in it but then add their own sort of uh, so like i said the hitchhiker they pick up in the original mm-hmm. he turned out to be part of their face's crazy ass family so mm. obviously i do like here they changed it from her him to it's a victim instead it's that woman mm. and of course no they changed the family last name don't they they changed the family last name in every fucking film i will say that do that literally do you know Jesus the, do you know this his name is uh Jared dyer the little kid yeah and uh thomas Hewitt's it's leather face in the 2013 movie Leatherface is actually called Jedediah. They changed the name with a fucking character like, in every fucking. It's so. I'd have to fucking explain to you out of podcast. I'd have to find all the names they use. They changed the name of the family in every fucking thing, pretty much. There's the Sawyer family, the Hewitt family. There's. I think there's another family name at some point. But I'll get. I'll Jeez. fucking. I'll explain. Yeah, I'll explain it all at another point. But um, I do like to change the story as well because in the original they're going to the house. Where he's mm-hmm. at anyway, so they're already going there. Whereas this version, they're not. They accidentally just go there because that's suicide. So I do like they kept the some original things, like, like the death of uh, the first character, the hammer to the back of the head. I do like mm. they kept that because that was obviously the most icon, the, the first death, so it's iconic. So it's nice they kept that. But I do like that I've changed from the smaller <clears> parts <throat> of the plot. So I do, I, I do enjoy that part of it. So my rank for this movie is an eight out of ten. It's a solid remake. There's a lot to offer for both mm. fans of the original and new fans trying to get into the franchise like you. You're a new fan who's never seen any Texas Chainsaw. You're just coming into this. I've given you the remake to watch and you've mm-hmm. watched it. So, yeah, 8 out of 10. I think that's fair enough. Okay. Well, my overall, I say it's, it's an okay film. It's got some great shots, like you like mentioned, the dolly shot. But uh, as you'll see, a trait with me in most horror films is that I find horror films kind of dull. I don't really get much excitement out of them. And this one, similar kind of thought. It's like, I can watch it, but I wouldn't really choose to watch it again. Like, I could sit down and watch it if you was to make me, but I wouldn't really choose it myself. Like, it was, there were some good shots, but some of the shots, like, other shots like, were very samey. There was a lot of repeated scenes and walking through the woods, running through the woods. Yeah, <laughs> like sometimes the way films are cut can work. It this one it seems a bit like to mind fucking that like it jump it keep cutting and it gets a bit confusing at times. It's a bit it's good, but there's like I wouldn't like it, like it's good for like, something like you would enjoy this. I know you wouldn't like would watch enjoy it and watch it whereas I just wouldn't not my cup of tea because it hasn't got rehypnol on it I just don't drink and, my cup of tea yeah well, do drink it drink this and to honest, the major criticism it needs more Dora it's it needs more Dora <laughs> fuck off with Dora 
So I'll I'll give it a, a six out of ten. It was an average film. Okay. So that gives it a check over a rating of seven out of ten. Mm-hmm. So my question of the day is do you believe that because obviously this was quite a success when it first came out, so that's why it obviously made the prequel. Mm. But do you think this was more a success than most horror remakes years later? Cause like things like Friday the Thirteenth, Nightmare on Elm Street, and a lot of other ones, they just don't go well with both critics and sort of fans. Mm. They're just not looked fondly upon. Do you think that this being the first major horror apart from the Psycho, but we won't talk about because that, that film was shit. Uh, do you think it's because there's no like, horror fatigue in place yet for the genre? Because obviously it was years before anything, or mm. do you believe it was just down to the fact that? The franchise quality had just been going down since the first one and eventually hit rock bottom with the fourth movie. So when people saw this, they didn't have much of like a, a comparison of like good quality to think of. So they just looked at this and looked at the fourth and go, okay, this is better than the fourth easily. So This is what usually happens with films. It's like if it, if it starts to get like worn down, the studio will be like, okay, we'll, 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 we'll reboot it and it'll be completely fine. I mean, so that usually what what happens a lot, and it what it does is it affects like the fans because they'll change stuff, and there'll be the hardcore fans who get really annoyed at the changes, and a lot of times they reboot it just from mo- like a, a money grab. So you will find that a lot of the there's not that much effort put into it. So that's why you probably see. A, a lot of reboots aren't that great. They'll probably just be quite hastily made or just done for more, to get more money, really, than to actually make something good. That's probably why a lot of reboots seem quite soulless. And, I mean, it depends on how you see it. Like, some people might probably think that this is probably more of a successful one because... They're not so used to it yet. Like back then, it wasn't yeah, that. The, the only one before this thing. was Psycho. Mm. So this, this was more of like a unique concept of a reboot for a horror film, and then it eventually becomes so overused that everyone's getting pissed off at reboots. Like everyone's getting so pissed off with the live-action Disney films because everyone's like, "Well, this will reboot every single film to make a new films and." You, you know what people are like. Fans and audiences get a bit peed off when things change. So pretty much both you know, parts of that question could work yeah. to why it was successful. Yeah, because it, like back then it wasn't as prevalent and the idea of it at least ha- tried to put a, like, a spin on it that would work for both fans and like fans of the thing and new people so that it would it still didn't seem as soulless like the fourth film back then yeah because that was shit even they had Matthew McConaughey and it was shit mm. so, didn't they like bring the same sort of people from the original for some of the things what for this I'm one because I remember, remember hearing that like the cinematography person from I think, I think they had well. some people in, involved from the original, but not a, a yeah. massive amount. I know cast wise, the one they did after this, well, the one they did after the, the prequel to the reboot, when mm. they did the sequel to the original, they actually got cast members from like, some of the older movies to return in like small cameos mm. in like the opening sequences to explain. But what I mean, like, after. Like, like the like the actual like set people, not like cast or anything, but like actual like like cinematography people and all that so, uh, I think they hmm. may have I'm not I want to quote me on that one um, let's have a look shall we so the screenplay was by Scott Cosa who well nothing to do with the original because obviously the original was Toe Pooper mm-hmm. uh Cinematography was done by, yeah, he it it did the original Texas Chainsaw, yeah. the 2003 remake. Weirdly, the second Alien vs. Predator movie, the, f- hey. the remake of Friday the 13th, 
Hmm. So another horror one, which that probably makes sense for the fact that this was the same director as Texas Chainsaw, so that's probably why. Hmm. He also he also did the the boy, the one that doll one. Oh, that one. And uh, the Nicolas Cage movie, Mom and Dad. Oh God, Nicolas Cage. <laughs> but yeah, it's the same. It's the same cinematographer. Hmm. So yeah. I know stuff too. But yeah, uh, so that was an interesting answer. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's it for Chat Cave this week. Join us next week as we take another look at a, well, the next big horror remake there is. Dora the Explorer. Genre. Nope. We discussed Rob Zombie's <laughs> Halloween. But until then, I've been your host, Drinking Thomas Shoes. I just want to watch Dora the Explorer. You're going to keep saying that until we fucking watch it, aren't you? Yes, I am. And this has been Chat Cave Podcast. Now, where did I put my chainsaw? I'm going to get rid of Dora once and for all. Asshole.